Della. Yes, Mr. Rossi. I want you to do me a favor. See the couple sitting at the table there? Mm -hmm. That's Mr. and Mrs. Granville, bride and groom. They're leaving on their honeymoon tonight for a trip around the world. I want you to finish your number at their table and give the bride these flowers for me. Oh, I'd love to. Say, wasn't that Duke Branson? I don't know. He had a note to go backstage and see Della Mason, so I let him go. Well, if that's Duke Branson, he's up to no good around here. I'm going to see what's going on. Hey, Duke Ransom just come in and I've lost him. Send over a couple of boys right away to help me pick him up, will you? Yeah, at Rossi's. He's inside somewhere. Huh? Okay, thanks. I'm Ryan, special detail from headquarters. Did you leave a note for someone to come backstage? Yes, I did. Who? Well, I don't remember his name. It was somebody who phoned and said he had some special arrangements, so I just said all right. You don't know him, then? No, I never heard of him before. Well, now, just a minute, Miss Mason, please. Miss Mason, are you in the habit of receiving strangers backstage? What is this, anyway? Where are you going now? Into my dressing room to make a change, if you don't mind. Okay, I'll stick along. What do you think you're doing in my dressing room? Get out. Okay. Take it easy, sister. Do as I tell you and you won't get hurt. What do you want? Pick up that phone and call Rossi and tell him to come up here. You want to see him? No. Pick up that phone. Play it smart. If you don't, it's going to be just too bad. It's either you or him. Figure it out for yourself. I can't hear you. What do you want? I want you to come down here. Right away. What's the matter? You sound funny. I can't tell you. Okay, I'll be right over. Yeah. 
Della? Della? Della, what's the matter? Don't move. You were told to keep your mouth shut, but you talked to the coppers anyway. All right, wise guy, here's where we pay off. was in it all along. She hit Duke Ransom in here, called Rossi, got him to come down here so Duke could kill him. All cars, calling all cars at the Rossi nightclub, a murder by two persons. Please let me go. You're in this up to your neck and you gotta stay in. Oh, no, she don't. We're getting rid of her. What, me turn loose of an eyewitness? I'm not sticking out my neck for any kidnapping rap. We're dumping her off at the docks, and if you don't like it, you can get another driver. Don't try it. A big boss wouldn't like it. And then where would you be? Well, it's a lucky break for you, sweetheart. But let me tell you, you saw what happened to Rossi for talking, and the same thing will happen to you if you don't keep your trap shut. I remember one word from you to the coppers, and I'll get you no matter where or how. Do you get it? Here, Captain? You've come to the wrong place. This is a steamship. Imagine anyone being fool enough to think he'd let a woman come aboard. Why, he hates them like poison. <laughs> Stand by to cast off. But this girl's wanted for murder. She ran this way, thought she might have come aboard without anyone seeing her. She couldn't have. I've been on deck all the time, poisoning. There's a heavy penalty for harboring criminals, Captain. Now listen, mister, I've got the reputation as an honest man. I don't harbor crooks, especially a woman crook. I guess you've never heard of Captain Josiah Storm, have you? Oh, sure, I've heard of you. Well, sorry to bother you, Captain. Come on, Bill. Come on, get that gangplank to shore. Let go, you fool, and spring on! Oh, boy, am I ready for this. Uh, Mrs. Jim, yes. uh, how about me and you making a deal? All right, Miss Ray, what kind of a deal? If I bring you your coffee every morning, uh, how about you showing me how to radio? Okay, that is a deal. Uh, uh, but, but what, what, what's that? Hey! Well, that knocks you right on your neck if you touch it. And I'll tell you something else. You better scram on out of here with the captain's breakfast or he'll really knock you on your neck. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, I, I, I'll scram it. <laughs> What's 
What's the matter with you, boy? Uh, sir? Uh, 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 I thought I'd done see something. Well, you'll see something if you don't clean that mess up right now. Uh, uh, yes, Get sir. Going. Let me stay here, please. Oh, so you're the girl they were looking for. I was so frightened. I had to hide. Come on, get out of there. You better do as you're told. Take a fire to my cabin. Radio the authorities. We got this girl aboard. Oh, please don't. At once. Please, let me explain first. I seen you from the bridge helping her out. Is it the murder woman? That's what the captain's trying to find out now. Ah, we have a lady stowaway, no? Yeah, it looks that way. Hey, Misery, you were right. There was someone in that lifeboat. Hmm? Everything's under control now. She's in here with Captain Storm. Oh, you mean a lady? Yeah. It's the murder woman. Oh, no, you don't. You get in here now and stall. Find out what's happening. Put down the table. Yeah. Get out. Uh, yeah, sir. Here. Drink this and stop that shivering. And don't try any sniveling on me for sympathy because it don't go. Well, she couldn't pick a worse ship in any ocean. I never saw a man who hated women any more than Captain Storm. Yeah, I heard he was a woman hater. What, uh, what happened? Well, I'll tell you. His wife ran away with another man and took the baby with her. Oh. Why, he ain't been fit to talk to ever since. And that's been 20 years ago when he first bought this ship. Well, that's a mighty queer yarn you spun, miss. If you're innocent like you say, why'd you run away? Oh, I... I was frightened. I just ran and hid, that's all. Yeah, I know. You women are good at that. Well, it ain't no concern of mine. I'll just contact an inbound ship by radio and send you home and let the police do the worrying. Oh, please don't. I don't hold with criminals, especially women criminals. But I'm not a criminal. The police say different. But I told you. A pack of lies. I'm not lying. I never saw that man before in my life till he came out from hiding in my dressing room with a gun. You know what you ought to do? Is go on home to your folks where you can be taken care of. I haven't any folks. Don't come that on me. Everybody has folks. They have uncles, aunts, and, and, and folks. I haven't any family. My mother took me away when I was a little girl, and when she died, I had to make my own way as best I could. Where were you born? In a little farm in Ohio. Oh, you ain't the one. Look, if your daughter were alone and in trouble, you'd want her to have a fighting chance, wouldn't you? Maybe. Well, that's all I'm asking. Just a place to hide out for, for 24 hours until, until the police have a, an opportunity to uncover the truth in their own way. Then I'll give myself up and I'll take whatever comes, good or bad. You mean you don't want to squeal on the gang, is that it? That's all. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you a day, 24 hours. Here's the bathroom. There's water in there and plenty of towels. I told the cook to bring you up something to eat. And remember, don't leave this cabin. You understand? You send that message yet? Well, no, sir. I wasn't sure what you wanted to send. Well, hold it up for a while. Get back to your post. Yes, sir. Misery. Uh, yes, sir. Go down and get some steak and fried potatoes and some other stuff and bring it up. Yes, sir. Right away.
Well, the rate we're going, we're going to make a landfall by the 17th. That'll be a week from tomorrow. What are you going to do then? Well, discharge my cargo, load another, and... What's the matter with you? Nobody but a dumb idiot has asked that question. I mean about the gal. Oh, well, uh, I've been thinking things over, and I think I'll give her another 24 hours. Oh, you've been saying that every day for the last five weeks. Sir. What of it? I'm master of this vessel, sir. Well, the more I see that gal, the more I think she's true blue. Yes, sir. Well, we know more about that after the police get through with her. Let's see. Your gal be about her age now. Mr. Richard. Clinton. If you ever mention my daughter's name again, I swear I'll have you transferred to one of them deluxe liners, you understand? Well, if I had a girl her age, I'd... But you wait. And from the looks of you, you never will have. So shut up. Come in. Captain Storm, Jim said... I mean, Mr. Benton said that if I wanted to send a radio message, I had to ask your permission. That's right. Well, I, I thought that maybe if I wrote out a full account and detail of exactly what happened and sent it into the San Francisco police... What for? Well, then they'd know that there's nobody on board to blame for my being here except myself. Now, young lady, when you boarded us, you told me you wanted just a little time to let things simmer down. But well, you've been here five weeks, is that right? Yes, there hasn't been anything on the radio for a month. But you want to send that fool telegram to have the police waiting for us at the wharf when we dock, to arrest us all, tie up the ship. Oh, I... I didn't think about that. Oh, I reckon your intentions were good, but I know of a certain place filled with good intentions. Della! Della! Della, look! Look, look what came popping out of the air. What is it? International News Service Bulletin. The body of a woman identified as Della Mason, missing nightclub singer, sought for the murder of Antonio Rossi, was dragged from West River late today. Oh, you that... get it? You're dead. That's right. I'm free. Sure, now that you're dead, you can start life all over again. Oh, I can take a new name. Sure, and I'll help you get a new job. In radio, you'll be marvelous. Oh, Captain Storm, I, I don't know how to thank you for not letting me send this message. Oh. <laughs> What are you chittering about? Oh, I was just thinking. About what? <laughs> I was thinking how funny things sometimes turn out, whether folks want them to or not. <laughs> well, as long as you're thinking, Mr. Clinton, see if you can figure out how we're going to explain this girl to the authorities when we dock. If we tell the truth, she goes to jail. If we tell a lie, we go to jail. You got a week to figure it out. Gee, it's lovely out tonight. Where's that music coming from? Hong Kong. We'll be in there tomorrow, you know. After one stop at Chan Su to unload wheat. shame to let a voice like that go to waste. It's perfect for radio. Well, I've got to forget all about radio and voice. Everything that belonged to Della Mason. People remember voices. 
And the radio reaches a lot of people. Della, I, I can't leave you out here alone. There's nothing else to do. Yes, there is. I can leave the ship, you know, and go ashore with you and get another job. Now listen, Jim. You've been grand to me. You've helped me when I needed help. I didn't want you to do anything else for me. But if I want to? Well, you want to because you feel responsible for me. I don't want to be a drag on anybody. It wouldn't be fair to you, and I don't want you to take any more risks on my account. Now you just forget about me. I'll never be able to do that, Bella. Oh, please don't, dear. Maybe later when all this trouble is straightened oh, out. Oh, forget the trouble. Well, the trouble won't forget us. I've got to think and plan some way that I could clear my name. All right. Then what? Well, then, if you still feel the same way about things... Jim, could I see you alone for a minute? Excuse us, will you? Tell the truth, she's sunk. We tell a lie, we're sunk. We'll hide her. No, Captain Storm won't listen to that neither. Oh, I see. Captain Storm and his waiting game. He's letting this go until the last minute just to see us squirm. Where is Captain Storm? In his cabin. I'm going to have this out with him right now. Captain Storm. Yeah? Well, see here, sir. It's about Della Mason. We've got to figure out some way to get her ashore. We've got to. Ain't you taking in a lot of territory, young man? All right, all right, if you're determined to block it. What's that? It wouldn't hurt you to turn your back while we slip her past the authorities. You think a lot of that young girl, don't you? That's right, a lot. Well, if she was my worst enemy, I wouldn't set her ashore in any port in these waters without plenty of protection, not these days. You show me some way to set her ashore safe and keep her ashore safe and I'm with you. But I'll see her in jail before I'll see you cast her adrift. Well, there, there ought to be some way. Well, there is for them that knows the ropes. Well, you mean you, you know a way? I wouldn't let a little thing like that swamp me. Well, then why don't you tell us? No one's asked me yet. Well, I'm asking you now. Will you help us, please? You mean I take full command? Why, well, certainly. I don't care anything as long as she's safe. Well, then it's a bargain. Well, what are you going to do? Am I in full command? Well, yes, but... Well, then, keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. You may learn something before you die. Good night, young man. There she is, the roughest, toughest port in the whole Orient. You see that little junk down there? That's Fang Sui Wong, a friend of mine. He's a pirate. Makes a good living at it, too. He's got a sort of a family affair. Yeah, this port is the headquarters of all that business. Quirling, smuggling, pirates. Kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog outfit. Are we going to be here long? Oh, we ain't. But you are. Mr. Clinton, half speed. Steady as she goes, helmsman. Wait a minute. You said this was a pirate hangout. Yes, and I also told you there was no law. Look, I've got my course plotted. I know what I'm going to do. You don't need to worry, miss. You just do as you are told. And remember, in this port, your name is Smith. Mary Smith. Understand? All right, come on. going ashore before somebody comes aboard snooping around asking foolish questions. Say, where are you taking her? Now, wait a minute. Am I in command here, ain't I? Well, yes, but... Well, then shut up and mind your own business. Come on, Dilly. I mean, Miss Smith. Yeah, 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 yeah
that now. Say, you're putting on tonnage, ain't you? I am not. I'm down to 240. Why, hello there, General. Say, I'm mighty glad to see you. I, I heard you were dead. I'm happy to say the report is quite untrue. Oh, say, excuse me, ma'am. Say, here's a little girl I want you to take mighty good care of. Miss Smith, Miss Mary Smith, this is Minnie. How do you do? You want me to board her? Well, yes, room and board. You see, uh, she wants to lay undercover for a couple of months, and I knew I could trust you. Mm -hmm. What's she done? Well, she ain't done nothing. Does the cops know it? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Okay, I see. That'll cost you five dollars a day, in advance. Oh, no, you don't. Now, listen, I'll pay you when I get mighty good and ready, and not a minute before. Oh, I see. This is on you. Well, that's different. Come on, I'll show you to your room. All right, General, now what's on your mind? If you're disengaged for a moment, I should like greatly to converse with you. All right. Would you please sit down? Captain Storm. I wonder if you'll carry a cargo of arms and ammunition for me up the river. So that's what's on your mind, huh? No, sir. None of that stuff for me. Where's Della? You mean Miss Smith, don't you? Yeah, where is she? Why, many took her up to her room. Now, you're not going to let her live here, are you? Why not? A nice, lively place. Plenty of girls for company. Where's her room? Upstairs someplace. I don't know where. How's that for size? Mm. Miss Smith! Miss Smith! That must be you. Kind of tough remembering a name like that just at first. What do you want? You can't stay in this house. And why not, may I ask? Well, because it's... Uh, Jim, this is Minnie. She's going to look after me until things are straightened out at home. And that's Miss Chicago. Just plain Chicago, please. Hiya, Jim. She's going to be my roommate. And chaperone, if it makes you feel any better. Say, you're not by any chance insinuating anything, are you? How long have you known Captain Storm? Crowd in 20 years? Why? That's all I wanted to know. Well, this is quite a place. I know, General. But guns is guns and bullets is bullets. I never carried any contraband in my life, and I don't intend to start now. Here's my permission from the government to buy arms and ammunition. All I need is a carrier that I can trust to make safe delivery of the guns and ammunition which I've already purchased and are here awaiting shipment. Say. You will take the cargo? That's how I make my living, carrying freight. Hey, that's right. Everything in the house, same price. <clears throat> well, give me a lifeboat. Lifeboat? What's a lifeboat? Well, you give me a tall glass and a piece of ice and a full bottle of whiskey, and I'll show you. Now, you see, you take your glass up like this, and you start pouring the whiskey. Now, you don't pour too fast, nor you don't pour too slow. You just kind of reach a happy medium here that looks kind of easy for you, don't it? Look at that now, see? You get it to a certain point, now, you see, there's what's termed a lifeboat, because, you see, no matter how much liquid is under it, it always floats. Catch on. Wait a minute. I don't know how you've got us sized up here, but me and old Cap Storm have been pals for years. And what he says goes with me. Well, naturally, I am anxious about her. She's all alone. And, well, somebody's got to look after her. Well, listen. You couldn't hire a smarter bunch of watchdogs for a girl than the gang I have right here. They know what's what. And I don't mean maybe. You boys getting everything you want? I greatly regret that my stay in your charming house is to be cut short. I'm sailing with Captain Storm tomorrow. Oh, Cap, I haven't seen you in over a year. What do you want to go away right now for? I made a dicker with the general to haul some freight. Oh, well, please stay, Cap, a couple of days, please. Say, now, look, we'll be back. 
Say, General, if we're going to sail on tomorrow's tide, we'll have to put that hat full of freight of yours aboard. Enterprise is the soul of business. Everything all right? Everything's swell. All right, then. Come on, we got some work to do. Goodbye, we'll see you later tonight. It don't make no difference what you've done or why you're here, because that's nobody's business. But remember this, no outside law can touch you because there's no extradition from this island. But don't get in bad with the authorities here, because if you do, they can sure kick you out right now. You mean they can deport you back to the States? No, just toss you out, like giving a drunk the rush. I'm wising you up for your own good, because it's no cinch for a gal to be broke in a place like this. And don't never get aboard any boat that touches here. This place is safe. But any officer can arrest you if you even as much as put your foot on the gangplank. Are there many people hiding out here? Hmm, a couple of hundred, I guess. Only the big shots managed to make it this far. And the girls here? Yeah, we got a few the coppers would like to talk over old times with. There's a Russian gal named Sonia. They've got the welcome mat for her out in Moscow. Only she likes it better here. And there's a lady from London, a sort of a self-made widow. There's a French girl living on diamonds she never bought. And I don't go under the moniker of Chicago just because I once sang in a choir. Yeah, there's a reason why they call this the Port of Missing Girls. We've all got plenty reason being here. Haven't we? I guess we have. Well, here she is already away to Chicago. That's what my enemies would like to know. May I inspect the hole before I load my cargo? Why, sure, sure. Follow me. Right in here, General. Well, there she is, sir. Hard as a drum and dry as a chip. Where would one hide a chip except in a woodyard? Now, now, General. I'm a little bit old to answer riddles. Perhaps not. Where would one hide a cargo of guns except in the ship of an honest man? What in tarnation? In my cargo? Softly, softly, my friend. The guilt is not yours, but that of my unspeakable countrymen who obeyed my contemptible orders and loaded these sacks in San Francisco. Yes, but why, General? when you had all the legal permits and everything else was in order? Because if it were known, you and your ship would have been marked for destruction. Forgive my contemptible deceit, but it was to protect your invaluable life. Well, then I'll double lock that hatch and post a guard. Do nothing. My enemies are watching me, not you. Things ain't as dull around here as you might think. We give a show every night. A show? What kind of a show? For the tourists that come from the mainland. Ever been in New York or San Francisco? Yeah, but what about this show? Give me a chance, will you? They bring tourists here, just like the Chinatown buses take sightseers to see the slums. Only here it's us that are the horrible example. What do you do? Oh, I warble and hoof a little. I earn my keep. That's what I want to do. Nix. When a man wants to pay your way, you let him. Oh, but you don't understand. I want to work. Entertainment's my business. What kind of music have they? They got an orchestra? Mopey Joe at the piano. I'll go on tonight. Listen, kid. These birds from the mainland is just tourists that want to see what missing gals look like. Wonder who they are and what they've done. <laughs> Doing a show here is second cousin to being a monkey in the zoo. So what? So nothing if you can stand the gap. So I'll do it. The guns and ammunition are hidden in sacks of wheat down the hole. Is Storm out to resist an attack? He and the maid have a couple of guns, a rifle, that's all. Get me 20 men to sail with Storm in the morning. I'll tell them they are my crew to man a ship in a morning. How about the dough you promised me for this? Quiet, here they come. My friend, the governor tells me you have secured clearance to sail for Amoy in the morning. Yeah. You have room to take me and the crew? How many? 
Oh, not many. Only, uh, only 20. Well, you know, we're full of blow with cargo. They'll have to take deck passage. Oh, but naturally. And a cabin for me, perhaps? Oh, I reckon we can find a place for you to roost. Oh, thank you, Mon Capitaine. Cost a single boat, so yeah. Who has forgotten me? But still, there was a time when I was on the square. He didn't have a dime, and yet I didn't care. But when he got his dime, he showed me to the door. I've evened up the score. Oh, I changed my routine. And I don't have to tell you what I mean. When Cupid passed me by, I didn't bat an eye. I rearranged my routine. Oh, I changed my routine. And now my cares are few and far between. I made them pay the price. I played with loaded dice. Oh, yes, I changed. Playboys, gay boys, I've never been neglected or dejected. Tall men, small men, so calm, so cool and collected. And I've collected, oh, I changed my routine. Now there's an altogether different scene. I started out from scratch, I've yet to meet my match, because I changed my routine, because I changed my routine. Oh, don't forget to feed the kitty. How's the bar, eh? Ask me, this is one of the rawest fakes we've struck yet. Missing girls. They're nothing but cheap honky-tonk chiselers. You'll regret that, my boy. <clears throat> Listen, folks. We have a new girl who's going to give us a little number. Will you please give her a little attention? Okay, Moby, take it away. It's her twin sister. I got a funny feeling. Well, there's a resemblance, but it could be Della Mason where well, she's dead. That is Della Mason. With his dream cargo. I'm watching and hoping. I'm aimlessly groping. seen the girl 20 times, I ought to know. Well, I know, but it was in the newspapers, and we read about it. She was dead. It makes no difference with me what the newspaper said. That's Della Mason. Or as it must have some I plead.
Okay, but you've got to do another. But I have nothing ready. Well, what was that one you were doing this afternoon? Oh, well, one night, one kiss and you. That'll be fine, Joe. One night, one kiss. Let it go. to let her alone. Second killing comes easy. You should know, my sweet. This island is my very good friend and is very much guided by what I tell him. As long as you are my friend. Oh, don't tell oh, my friend. friend. Oh, oh, Captain Storm, Manuel, he's with that girl in her room. He's what? He followed her. But with you, it is different. You are so beautiful. You are so lovely. It just depends on. And when you're mad, you're still more beautiful. some other way of getting your coolies down, boy. I don't ship rats on my vessel. My dear Captain Storm, let us not be too hasty. If I may say only a word in my own defense. Well, are we not being a little childish, all of us, about something quite unimportant? Childish? Well, that ain't childish. I've seen men killed for less. But we are men of the world. Why should we quarrel over a girl? I ain't quarreling. I'm just telling you I'm taking her with us. That's all. But you cannot possibly hide her. The radio station ashore will broadcast your little secret throughout the world. And if you take her on board your ship and fail to surrender her to the authorities, your own country will imprison you for adding a fugitive. Why not leave her here, where she is safe? Because I don't trust you no further than I can throw an elephant by the tail, that's why. Better take him up on that. When the tourists get through broadcasting her name, this will be the only place in the world she'll be safe. Thank you, madame. And to set your mind at rest, I shall instruct my man that anyone who molests Miss Smith in any way shall have his hands removed. I'll just go you one better than that. If there's any shenanigan about this deal, I'll see that you have your head removed with the double-barreled shotgun. The girl stays here. You go with us. Is that fair? I couldn't desire anything better. All right. Be aboard at nine. We sail with the tide. Thank you, Mr. Captain.
Having so many passengers is an unexpected pleasure, is it not, Captain? Well, business is business, General. Manuel's passage money pays the bills, same as anyone else's. Hey, boy. You get this knife back when you get there, boy, Sammy. Those men outnumber us nearly two to one. They would be dangerous if found. Yeah, that's why I'm making good and sure there ain't one of them got a toothpick to fight with. You know, I sailed these waters once or twice before, General. Well, even if things do go wrong at home, we can we can always find some way to get along. I don't see how. I, I can't live here all my life. Here? Well, there are other countries. Russia, South America, Africa. Say, the world's a mighty big place to search for one little girl. I know, but I have no way of traveling. I have no passport, no money. No way of earning my own living. Well, I have. A man who knows radio can make a living any place on the face of the earth. And my passport entitles me to take my wife anywhere. Jim, I can't let you do that. It wouldn't be fair. Now, wait a minute. Let me decide that. No, Jim. You have your own people at home to think about. Your friends and your family and your own future. Don't ruin your whole life on account of me. What do you mean, ruin my life? Say, do you think I'm going to stick in an office, sit in a swivel chair, and listen to my arteries harden? Not much. I'm going to all the places there are and see everything there is to see. And hot or cold, you're coming with me. What do you say? What do you say? I don't know what to say. Don't be a chump. Say yes. Thanks, Chicago. Damon, Capitan, and my good General Walton. Hello. You are looking very well indeed, my dear General. You are traveling with us in this boat? It is to be my privilege. I did not understand that Manuel and his men are traveling with us in this boat. I have my own good reason for wanting that snake-eyed rat aboard, General. I wish I had known. Ah, uh, don't you worry. The best place for that bird is right aboard this ship, where we can both keep an eye on it. There is little doubt that you'll bear watching. Where's Jim? Mr. Clinton, do you see Jim? Oh, Jim! They're paging you, big boy. Take good care of her, Chicago. You leave it to me. I don't suppose you kids care, but I'd like to sail on this tide. Captain Storm, I'm so grateful to you for everything. Now, here, 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 none of that. Don't do that! Come on. All right, Mr. Clinton, we're away to gang gang. Let go of your bottom line. All right, hurry. I understand you have a Miss Mason here. Well, what about it? I'm the American consul. Yeah, I know. And uh, I'd like to have a little chat with her. It won't do you any good. Well, I also have a wireless message to deliver to her. Oh, I see. All right, room 17 at the top of the stairs. Thank you. Cheer up, kid. You'll be back before you know it. Oh, no. I was just thinking. <laughs> I did that once. And all I got was a headache. Miss Mason? Button your lips, kid. This is the law. I have a wireless for you. We picked it up over the consulate radio, and since I wanted to have a little talk with you anyway, I brought it over. Oh, Jim. He'll be back sometime next week. Miss Mason. We have followed this case very closely. And if you will take my advice... Tell them we don't want any fish. If you have any knowledge that will help us clear this case, it will be to your advantage to put yourself in the hands of the law. But I'm innocent of that crime. And there's every reason why you should give yourself up. What can you lose? 
Anywhere from 10 to 20 years, according to how smart a lawyer you got. Even if you're guilty, coming over to our side and helping the law will have much weight when it comes to the sentence. Yeah, I fell for that once, and now look where I am. I had absolutely nothing to do with the planning of that crime. You see, when Duke Ransom came Nick, to my... Nick, But I'm only trying to tell him what happened. Yeah, and there's about 9,000 guys in jail right now that did the same thing and wish they hadn't. Oh, uh, you were saying... She was saying nothing. She was talking on help. I'm sorry, Miss Mason. But if you should change your mind... Over my uh... dead body. Here's your hat. What's your hurry? So nice of you to have come in. Come back again in a couple of hundred years. I heard what he said. It saved the trouble to go with him now. Say, what are you trying to pet her? Manu will send her to him when she returns. Not with Jim around. Jim is not coming back. What? Nor your Captain Storm either. Keep talking. People who get in my Manu's way always pay. What's the gag? That I will not tell. You talk or I'll tear you apart. <laughs> now tell it before I go to work on you. Manuel and his men, they will capture Captain Storm's ship tonight. Tonight? How do you know? I hear Manuel tell men how to open holes, get to the guns from back. I believe she's telling the truth for once in her life. We've got to warn them. We can't. They're 200 miles up the coast by now. Radio. Then it'll send it from the council. Captain Storm ship at once. You're under arrest, Miss Mason. You know this is government property. Yes, I know, I know. But I don't care. If only you can get that warning through to Captain Storm in time. Keep on trying. You know, General, if I'd have had my way, we'd have double locked that number two hatch and set a watch to stand by. But you did not. And as a result, we are now safely at sea with nobody the wiser. I hope not. Too late. Keep on. Keep on trying. Send this. Manuel and crew armed to attack your vessel. Here's a warning from the consulate. Manuel's men are armed with guns taken from our cargo, and they're going to attack us tonight. I knew something like that would happen. Mr. Clinton, bring a steam line to the bridge deck. Yes, sir. Here's a rifle for you. Here. Come on to the bridge deck. Resistance is useless! We have unlimited ammunition and you have none! 
Surrender and I'll spare your lives. He wants a cheap victory. He'll not spare us. I know. If you want this ship, you'll have to take it. I got about 20. Yes, and they've got 20,000. This is your last chance, Captain Storm. Will you surrender? men up in the number two hold. Thank you, Mr. Clinton. You did right well. Thank you, sir. Well, son, you got that message to us in a split second of time. If we'd have been caught napping, we'd have been dead men right now. Yeah, I know. We're alive, but, but it cost Della her freedom. What's that? Well, she sent that message from the consul's boat. It's the only radio she could reach. She's under arrest right now. On the bridge! About ship! Hey, where are you going? You don't suppose we're going to let Della face that right alone? We're going back to her. If you think I'm going to stand here and see you put an innocent girl in jail, you're mighty mistaken. We're interested only in justice. All right. Now, you know and I know that this little girl never committed a criminal act in her life. So why not forget the whole thing and let the matter drop? I understand your viewpoint, Captain, but I still have to notify Washington. Washington? What does Washington know about this? Has Washington never heard her side of the story? Does Washington know it wasn't for that little girl that me and my men would be as dead as Michael right now? Please, Captain Storm, it's no use. Let me handle this. I'm going to get you out of this if I have to take this place apart. Now listen, Mr. Bennett. Do you want to hear this message I'm sending, or don't you? What does it say? I'm sending Della Mason, wanted for murder of Tony Rossi, on the first boat leaving here. Well, look. That leaves the consul no choice in the matter. But maybe since we're the first boat out, she can go with us. I'll say she could. Now listen, Mr. Bennett. I'll take this little girl back to San Francisco, and we'll tackle the police together. It won't be the first time I tangled with them either. Well, all right, Captain. I'll have the necessary papers ready for you at once. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. I knew you'd see it my way. <laughs> see, I told you to leave the whole thing to me. Come on. <laughs> Now, don't you worry a mite, Deli. Well, I've got a whole crew of men aboard here just itching to get their hands on them gangsters if they have to turn the whole town upside down to do it. I'm certainly living up to your opinion of women, making trouble for everybody all the time. And who says so? Well, it's true. Why, if it wasn't for you, honey, the whole kit and caboodle of us would be feeding the sharks in the bottom of China Seas right now. And I'm already take the measure of any man that says different. A message from the consul. They caught Duke Ransom and he confessed the whole thing. Oh, I don't even have to stand trial. No, no, you're free. 
<laughs> Say, young fella, this telegram's from Washington. And Washington says release Della Mason. Well, Washington can go climb a cherry tree. I'll never release Della Mason. Well, that's the woman of it. One man does all the work, and the other fellow takes all the credit. I made a mess of my family. Looks like this turned out all right. Mm -hmm. Suits me anyhow. 